Papa, that bottom lady is calling now. Yeah. Too much. Okay. Good evening, you're live with Faye on YouTube. Thank you for joining us. Every evening at 8 o'clock, we bring up a topic we believe people should be talking about or should be paying attention to. Um, and this is one of my favorite things to do, to bring up topics people don't want to normally talk about and sort of uh, trick my audience into thinking about things that they wouldn't otherwise think about. So today we're going to talk about periods. Uh, I do hope you'll stay through the conversation. Uh, before we get started, just want to remind you to uh, like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, it will give us the encouragement we need to keep going and to continue doing the independent journalism. Also to use the super chat feature and support us financially as well. The other thing I'm super proud about today is that we have an all women's panel. And we don't have these often enough. I love it when we have uh, so many women on the panel. and. This time, we have really cool women on the panel. So before we get to our speakers, this is what we're going to talk about. Now, there's been a raging debate over the last couple of days um, on social media about the fact that food delivery company Zomato has decided to give its uh, female and transgender employees 10 days off in a year as period leave. Now, this is according to a Reuters report. The CEO, the Dipendra Royal, had made the announcement in an email to employees on Saturday he also said, and I quote, there shouldn't be any shame or stigma attached to applying for period leave. You should feel free to tell people on internal groups and emails that you're on your period leave for that day. He went on to say, a note for the men. Our female colleagues are expressing that they are on period leave. It shouldn't make us uncomfortable. This is part of life. And while we don't fully understand what we will go through, we need to trust them when they say they need to rest it out. I know that menstrual cramps can be very painful for a lot of women, and we have to support them through it if we want to truly have a collaborative culture at Zomato, end quote. So it's a very interesting conversation because, funnily enough, it has split opinions among women on whether or not this is a good thing. Now, there are many women who believe this is necessary because of the kind of pain that we know women or some women do go through. There are others who believe that this will actually cause women to be further sort of um, shunned in the workplace, that HR teams will shy away from hiring women. They'll see women as a further liability. And this is a bad thing. So where does this really land? How bad is period pain? And do women need a day off or the, or the option of taking a day off? If, uh, you know, if they happen to be in very serious pain. Now to introduce me, introduce you to our very, very, very cool panel. Uh, my first panelist is Dr. Kiran Coelho, who is a renowned gynecologist. Um, she's really among the best in her field. And it's really cool that she's decided to join us and she'll bring in the medical point of view, which is really important. We have uh, Reduka Kriplani, who is the executive editor at Autocar India. My team calls her a kick-ass woman. I tend to agree with them. She's really cool. She was one of India's first women race car drivers. And that alone makes her really cool. Um, Trisha Shetty, who's a lawyer who fights uh, for women's rights, um, will also join us. Sumuki Suresh, who is my favorite comedian, also fellow Bangalore girl. So yeah. I'm super happy to have her here. <laughs> And uh, Kusha Kapila is a digital creator, has also decided to join us and give us her point of view. So ladies, um, I think that Amita Balchandra, who put together this panel, couldn't have done a more stellar job. So I'm super happy to have you guys all here. Uh, thank you so much for making time. And to our audience, please feel free to ask questions. We are not shy. We will answer your <laughs> questions for yeah. you. All right, let's get to it. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Starting with Dr. Coelho. Dr. Coelho, do you think that, uh, actually the first medical question I should ask you is, how many women experience very severe pain or cramps during their periods uh, to a point where they're, no, they're not able to function? And do you see that as a severe problem? Well, it's not such a severe problem because even though 
statistically from 20 to 90 percent the range of women who uh, who experience period cramps but to have very severe cramps which mm. necessitate them to take leave would be hardly maybe five percent of okay. all women understand that everyone would get period cramps the younger you are the more period cramps you get usually the adolescent girls before they have their first baby the uterus has to contract to push out the clots out of a cervix which has never dilated before. These are the, uh, you know, the reasons for spasmodic dysmenorrhea or painful periods. As one gets older, one has children, and as one grows older, this sort of period cramps become less and less. So I would say the younger women would welcome this. The older women will say it's not really necessary. But if you are, since the question is how many women? Hardly 5% women during their periods would have such severe cramps which would necessitate them some of them to go to hospital have an in, in injection for pain relief which is so severe doc but um, i was just looking at the numbers and one in every five women in india according to data has suffers from pcos which yes. also results in painful periods in my understanding <laughs> wouldn't that then increase the number of women who have painful cramps no, PCOS again is for the younger generation and they do have pain, but it's not that insurmountable that they have to take leave. You see, we always tell our girls, be very active in the perimenopause, in the, the, around the periods. The more active you are, the less pain that you have. And usually the pain is the first day where you have pain, nausea, vomiting, all this, that the prostaglandin effect. So one pain relief, one antispasmodic tablet, one antacid, would do the trick and a hot water bag. It's not, you know, that bad. Those girls who have really bad, it's all right to take one day. And what have been people been doing over the years? They've been taking one day paid leave. You know, here now it's going to be stigmatized. Okay, that leave is because of your periods. So that's all right also in a way, you know. It works both ways. You think, you know, emancipated women would, uh, would you, you know, would not require this uh, uh, period leave, but period leave has started from Japan in 1920s in Russia, where women were given in their labor contract, they were given three days leave in, in Japan, Indonesia, and Thailand, and many countries, they still have that three days uh, leave for period pain. So whether we should do it here, it's a moot question. I think, according to me, medically, not necessary. Interesting, but medically they, not necessary, sort of yeah. the, the buck up philosophy, which is yeah. to take the pain relief, take the muscle relaxant and the antacid. <laughs> And but I second her. I second her completely. I mean, I think she's she's bang on. And women have been doing it over the years. They've been yes. going out to work in the fields. They've been doing everything. They survived it. No, nothing's happened to them. On one level, we fight for equality and we want to be equal and we want the same stage and then we want our divisions. So make up your mind, guys. Absolutely. Anyone wants to rebut that? I yeah, <laughs> oh, there are three of us. Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, Tisha, Tisha, yeah. Tisha, well, you know, Tisha um, I hear this rhetoric often uh, from the older generation, undoubtedly. Of you know, are he just touched you when you're walking on the street? You know what all I've had to go through. How much will you complain? You know, also from like senior corporates, right? Like, y'all are talking about pay parity now. You know what we've had to go through? We've played in the boys' club. Here's the thing. I don't know about the others. I don't want to play in the boys' club. I don't want to toughen up. I don't want to get with the spirit. You know, I'm not interested. If you're telling me my path to success is by struggling, is by popping painkillers, is by suffering, is by smuggling my sanitary napkin as though I'm carrying contraband when I run to the bathroom, because that's just the way it is, I refuse. And I will scream and shout and fight and make a huge trouble about this. Why? Because if my male counterpart was going through this, he would also refuse. Right? We've had multiple studies. When they tried male contraceptives, the side effects, Faye, was headache, vomiting, fever. I wonder who else has the same side effects when they consume contraceptives? Women. But yet no study has been stopped. We still pump contraceptives into women because that's just the way life is. Suck it up a little bit. You know, you talk about data when it comes to biology. Medical fraternity is intrinsically sexist. You oh. compare data. <laughs> Over time, the, the medicine is looked at from a male body's perspective. You talk about current situation, coronavirus. PPE kits are designed for the male body, not the female body. There's a huge shock study going on even about that, how it's not designed for a female body. You talk about heart attacks, right? There was a doctor 
uh, uh, there was a doctor that came out with a study that said period cramps are equivalent to getting a heart attack for men. And that's when people were like, oh God, this is the problem. Of course, a lot of the women were like, you know, we've only been saying this for like every time we have period cramps. It's bad. And we are told, are you PMSing? Get with it. My mother has handled it for so many years. Why your special award? You know, so the, <laughs> the glamorizing of a woman's struggle, suffering, because that's just the way it is, is putting, setting women back. And as women, we should be saying no. We stand okay. together. And but a lot I think, that I think that saying it's a struggle is the problem that I have. I don't okay. think it, I mean, I've gone through it when I was young. I had, I had terrible period uh, pain, but I went to rallying. I went all the way out. And it's a question of your mind over matter and who you are as a person. There are some people who may be able to deal with it with, with aplomb and say, okay, I'm out there. I don't mind doing this. And some who really get debilitated by it. And for the people who do get debilitated by it and do have that problem, you have the option of taking leave. But you don't want to give up your one-day vacation. You want a special day made out for it. That is what I'm objecting to. Yes, Take yes. your day of vocation. If it's bothering you that much, I have no objection to that. And, and I don't think you need to walk around with your sanitary napkin in your, I mean, I carry my tampon right in my hand and walk to the loo if I have to. Yeah, I don't think it needs to be hidden. That's your own mindset. If someone else has a problem with it, let them have it. That's their problem, not mine. No, no, and do you want to respond to that point yes, about uh, definitely. science being sexist? Absolutely. You see, biologically, biologically, women and men are made different, difficult, differently. Do you think any man could be able to go through labor pain? <laughs> I, I don't we'll think never so. Know. But, uh, you know, I doubt. I doubt. We'll <laughs> never know. Huh? We'll, never, we'll never know, of course. But, you know, women are built differently. They can take that much amount of pain and... Uh, you know, it's not sexist. If you see oral contraceptives, as the, uh, the point made out was very good. You see, in male contraception, the, the sperms themselves are very fragile. In fact, when we have infertility and it's a female factor, we are very happy because it's easily treatable. The ovulation, the, the tubal factor, etc. But for male sperms, they are very delicate. And if you have fewer sperms and poorer sperms, it's all the more difficult to treat that. So therefore, the male contraceptives were given up, not because of the side effects, but because it was very difficult to control those. You do, you do a vasectomy and the sperms, you, when you rejoin the, the vas, the sperms are already destroyed because of uh, auto antibodies. So therefore, male contraception, even though they looked, it would have been much more simple to have a male contraception. But except for vasectomy, none of the contraceptives really worked. Whereas for the women to suppress ovulation, and now we have first generation, second generation, third and fourth generation pills, which are very patient friendly. In fact, since PCOS is so rampant in our country and around the developed world, most of the low dose oral contraceptives and, and are, are given for PCOS to control polycystic ovarian syndrome. So the, having said that, the science has evolved so much that you have more patient-friendly contraceptives than we ever had before. Right. And therefore, it's not sexist. It's actually biological, scientific. So I, I, I want to bring in Kushan just for our audience. We lost Sumuki on the internet. With I'm back. back. I think I'm back. Hey, oh, I'm not. back. Sumuki was stuck. Sumuki was stuck like this. <laughs> was I stuck in a very bad phase? Was it like this? It was. It was cute. It was cute. Go, it was cute. Go for it. Go for it. I'm sorry. Oh. I missed out. I, but who was talking? I'm sorry. I just want to know who's I, talking, and then I'll be quiet. The doctor I, was talking. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I heard her. Kushan was talking. Kusha, so, Kusha. So, uh, yes. so uh, Doc said that uh, uh, younger women experience PCOS, yeah, doc, and younger women, yeah. younger women uh, experience a lot of pain. So, I've never had pain my entire life. I'm going to speak about my experience because I feel uh, that will bring a little bit of perspective here. Uh, I got diagnosed with PCOS earlier this year, and since then, my period has been extremely painful. Now, I have worked in corporates in a corporate sector like for about seven, eight years, and the conversation about period is still not not normalized in a lot of organizations. Yes, we are still sort of smuggling up 
our uh, you know uh, pads in uh, our loose so definitely uh, there is a need to normalize this but at the same time i want to tell you that earlier this week when i got my uh, last week when i got my period i could not move on the first two days and i took all the medicine in the world i am on all kind of medication everything that's necessary i could not move for those two days and because i'm self employed i decided to give myself those two days uh a leave for two days and i want to tell you here that at that point i really wanted to tell my clients and everybody i work with my business associates and my partner that i am taking this leave because the period pain is unbearable but yes i had to make an excuse which was i've i've got flu i'm not feeling well and that is what i'm not okay with i'm not okay with women coming up with excuses to justify their period pain the reality is that the pain that women feel in pcos and even uh, endometriosis it's unbearable for a lot of women now i am at that stance where definitely there should be a leave but every one size will not fit all you need to ask organizations how many women in that particular organization face pcos do a survey ask the women who are actually ask the women and trans people who are actually menstruating before coming to a decision of how many leaves in a year you could give a blanket of 10 leaves in a year but that does not mean that that will apply to your particular yeah, organization yeah. you know I, i just want to point out something i will share an experience here so i've always been a pop the pill and get to work type of woman uh but that's because i didn't have a choice i'm also i've also been always been very ambitious and i never wanted to give up whatever was happening on that day but when i became a team leader and i would have members of my team come up to me with tears in their eyes because they just couldn't get through the day i realized that there are two things a there, there definitely are women who are feeling the more severe pain than i do b there are definitely women with a lower pain thresholds than than mine and also important there are women who do not believe in allopathic drugs and they don't want to take painkillers they want that option of not having to take painkillers and it i just realized that my experience then cannot be extended and blanketed to everybody yeah. else because i don't know what that other person is feeling but i think that then it brings us back to do we need the extra leave because i have never in my career taken all of my sick leaves I so here come yeah i would come to work even when i was really ill so my question as an employer like now mm-hmm. that you have a team yourself say is that uh, i mean if you're an employer you're already giving a certain amount of leave to people during the year but they will suck it up and come to office with the debilitating pain because they don't want to lose one day of vacation so then it's fine but now that you have this special box then you'll take the day off and be aram at home so that's but, that but i really i see it differently because so, if so, it's as bad you take that day off and you stay at home regardless of x y or z why do you need a special box to be created for you that's okay, so i so my my argument here is and then i'm open to being rebutted is that the 12 days of sick leave that are mandated for all employees are for when you get sick or when you need surgery or when something goes sort of be wrong if you exercise these 12 days for your periods and then you get sick or something goes horribly wrong you're out of you're out of options and i personally i mean all of the people i work with are mad ambitious uh, i have to force them to take time off because they don't take time off when they're sick they don't take time off when they have migraines so i think that is also then about trusting that if an employee is taking a day off the person really needs that day off but drum roll sumiki suresh is now going to speak sumiki how do you feel about this and where is what's your stand on the period leave pure we've lost sumiki yeah i think we've lost her Perfect. so this keeps happening all right we'll bring her back okay opening it uh, up to okay, can i jump in yes go ahead so you know um i'll i'll try and give an example because i think the second you throw in like the period bomb people come with a lot of uh, you know uh, aspersion so there's a lot of talk happening about unpaid and paid internship right um in that vein a lot of people say especially in the legal fraternity it's common to get unpaid internship because of quote and quote experience now when you say are but this has been going on for a while struggle what you're doing is automatically you're excluding a whole group of people who cannot afford unpaid internships who cannot afford to spend that money commuting up and down who can't afford it so you're automatically being exclusionary right people will survive if i have to pop a pill i'll get up and pop a pill but that in itself becomes exclusionary 
Now calling something as you know a biological process that women trans men go through in terms of period as a special box, then you know we have to question my maker because I didn't ask to be checked into the special box, right? Yeah. You, you thank you for saying that. that. Thank you. You, you know, <laughs> anatomy is unfair. Let's just let's just put it out there. Our baseline is not the same. The starting line is not the same. So yeah, when you say that you have, uh, you know, you have twelve days, twelve sick leaves. Well, at twelve sick leaves. you know other people also have men also have 12 sick leaves but the point is that they 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 they're not menstruating so why should we suddenly include menstruation as a part of those sick leaves so the baseline is not the same okay okay so okay so okay let's get sugi in before our wifi <laughs> yeah i know i feel like more than this conversations uh, for or against my my wifi is truly winning this debate i would just like to say they are truly doing that no i i'm i heard bits and pieces of, i know i i heard dr kiran's entire point of view and i know trisha i heard a little bit of what trisha said uh it's for, it's not about i am someone who hasn't gotten her period for like 6 months it doesn't matter to me because that's how bad my body is what my body is going through and this is from the time i've gotten my period so for the longest time i was that girl who was very like what's the big deal why are girls crying about having their period and then i went on to go to a hostel which is filled with 400 different women where one of them is screeching in her hostel room and the other one who is we is just chilling saying oh my god such a just a dramatic girl uh this is all about you know just wing it and take it forward so i i get i get where uh, dr kiran and renuka and actually where you also come from where just pop up pill and move ahead because but you know the bigger question is the option it is it all comes down to the fact that you have uh, you have understood and you have a uh, a uh, sort of included the option of there are people who can cash into these days should there be a problem what the conversation right now the problem all of us have is what if people use it against them as an employer i am also worried what if the girls come to me as my writer said that i have my period i can encash into my leave yes that is something of course now if someone's going to manipulate someone's going to benefit but that's going to happen even in sick leaves why was sick leave included because men were pretty much dominating the workspace they were getting sick because they were working long hours smoking drinking and in their whole spaces and sick leave was included saying that okay this is for you to increase your productivity by taking care of your body similarly if there are more women coming into workspace we need to account for it even if you are not going through it uh i understand whether someone can take advantage of it but mm. that's a more personal level as compared to a female trans or a male thing but the inclusion of the of the idea has to be there it's it's only fair but there are more number of us in workspace so you got to do it what can you do this is before my wifi goes away is my point please <laughs> you guys can rebuttal and i will go away no. and then i'll come back and be happy can can i just come in here just adding to what yeah. sumukhi said like if men did menstruate and there is a fantastic essay oh by God. gloria steinum which you guys should must must read period uh, leaves would be uh, compulsory they would be necessary yeah. and they would not be optional so and i think there's a line there where she says that men would brag about how much they bleed and how how long they bleed it would okay. be a different conversation altogether <laughs> so oh God, you, you should hear this set by michelle wolf and she has this beautiful <laughs> set on period where she was like if men had periods they would have dc comic Uh, <laughs> they would have batman design tampons and their vaginas will be a bat cave i'm like oh, i'm sold <laughs> yeah. Why do I not have this? Yeah, Sorry, yeah. Pusha, no, that. and you know, even uh, even Gloria says in in her little piece, uh, she 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 does say that uh, there would be studies about how men perform better during period in Olympics, <laughs> which is the you know how men will convince uh, women that you know it's uh, sex is better during menstruation. So the entire power dynamic will would have shifted if if men did menstruate. So we're completely. So are, you, are you guys suggesting that basically, uh, you know, even in the case of Zomato event. actually the decision is a man sort of benevolently bestowing on the women in their office uh this this great gift where you know where others are saying oh, i don't know whether she have or not but at the end of the day the decision making the ability to make the decisions actually lies with someone else i saw renuka get up and leave she back i was yeah 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 yes do you I'm want to respond to all of that in fact i just went to get the charger cuz my ipad was dying <laughs> okay <laughs> No, so so the argument that you know um, women should have that option and we should trust the you know I work, work with not to abuse the option. Sorry. Well, ahead. you know me, I've constantly worked in a field where uh, 
there have only been men um, a lot of people keep asking me about you know oh, how has it been for being as a woman only in a honestly i've never felt this difference or felt differentiated or felt that i stand out in a crowd or i mean it's i guess other people have this perception of me but i don't i've never felt that different i've never felt different to them never been treated any different from them and i think even in my rallying days i mean people would know okay she's got a period she's off into the bushes to do what she has to do and and that's that's the way it is but it's for me it's a personal mindset i think it's the way you look at it yourself it's the way you treat it yourself it's the stigma you give it yourself you can't blame that on others you can't blame that on men you can't blame that on the rest of the universe and whatever that's my opinion i get it that there are people out there i get it that there are hassles out there i get it that we live in a country that more so than others probably has issues with this so i'm not saying that but i think to change it to change the mindset we should stop trying to make my idea of saying little box was not that someone might you misuse it but my idea is let's stop trying to create those little boxes and then wanting to step outside them so that's my my point i mean treat it embrace it deal with it sort out the problem and let's us not treat it as a as a problem you know yeah. so if we stop treating it as a problem the other people will stop treating it as a yes, problem yes i i agree completely in fact when we give sex education or when we talk to young girls who have this problem we always tell them deal with it go don't use it as an excuse not to go on to your sports field or you know get a letter to say don't uh, do sports or active sports of course swimming is another uh, factor altogether but even athletes run when they have their periods it's not a problem it's really a mindset and of course for those very few as i said such a small amount who really have bad pains it's just a couple of days you can take a, an off there or maybe it would be a good idea just to give an optional holiday i mean that uh, since there are more and more women in the workplace nowadays than there were before yes. and, and you know uh, that I, have, i have a question that's coming from one of our viewers mohsin has said uh, since the employer continues to pay women when they are on this period leave day would employers then not promote those who take the leaves leading to a higher wage gap and i suppose that then brings us to the next point that at the end of the day you give the option and to some level those who take that option will be penalized saying that hey bahut chutti li thi yaar let's not put her on this project let's not give her this raise let's not give her this new position which we already see happen and i've seen this happen to new moms because women who have babies who've just joined the workplace tend to need to go home faster because they have something yeah. going on they can't chill in the office drinking chai generally gappe maroing about life before they finish their work and so it's seen as are you know how she is she has to always like run away will that work against women in the workplace at, at least the ones who take that option anyone on the panel wants to tackle that trisha i saw your hand go up earlier so you know um I think we truly need to take a step back and understand the the you know the system right so we've heard this before um during the me too scan uh, during the me too uh, situation right um now since women are talking more and more about sexual harassment at the workplace are men are scared to even work with them why will employers uh, hire women right now we hear this often when we talk about a reservation for women in politics um a long standing thing where they say you won't be seen as merit we are this often when we talk about the uh, the 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 dalit community uh, and the obc demanding for reservation they say are you won't be you, your employer you know you feel host, hostile environment at workplace because it won't be through merit the thing we need to understand speaking of boxes okay let's let's address these boxes um when it comes to period specifically um and the doctor here is far more of an expert than i could ever be but uh, a lot of women suffer from dysmenorrhea dysmenorrhea primary yeah. and secondary uh, under secondary dysmenorrhea you have uh, uh, you have problems like endometrial endometrial atrophy uh, uterine uterine fibroids ovarian cysts the kind of side effects that your body goes through in terms of dealing with this pain is insurmountable uh, you also get uh, menstrual migraine uh, during periods which is a huge problem that women go through um you get heavy bleeding to a point where you can't you know you can't control it you can't stop you feel like you're being punched as you would feel as a man would feel during a heart attack now that's the pain aspect that is associated with periods that you just can't help the second aspect is how does the medical fraternity react to that there are studies multiple studies that show you that women are not prescribed the same amount of pain medication that men are 
beyond that is also the color that comes out into it the darker you are in color the less they take your pain seriously this is a huge issue going on in america right now with the race crisis where uh, black women their pain is just not taken seriously they looked at as you know a uh, medical fraternity dismisses it that's another discrimination that comes in now the third thing where do you go to change your menstrual uh, you know you say your tampon sanitary napkin in a workplace you go to the bathroom how is the bathroom designed there is a campaign going on called potty parity because they've done multiple studies to show how women's bathroom lines are much longer than male bathroom lines right who has designed these bathroom spaces you enter a bathroom what does a man need every time he enters a bathroom water toilet paper and probably a hand dryer if he needs to right what do we need we need sanitary napkin Where, how many bathrooms have you seen this included as a necessary essential commodity in your bathroom if you don't have a sanitary napkin if you don't have a tampon you're going around running whispering you're playing this chain, you know this uh, whispering game of uh, does anyone have a tampon does anyone have a sanitary napkin it's not included as an essential commodity in a bathroom another thing water supply you know this conversation that we've had has been from a very urban perspective you talk about rural facilities right where is the access to clean water to clean yourself after this uh, issue that's happened so i think say we had a debate how uh, uh, industries are now looking at slashing a lot of the uh, rules and stipulations that they had post corona during corona to uh, to boost the economy they're getting rid of crashes they're getting rid of bathrooms there is no access to sanitation and finally for those who want to say that you know suck it up and deal with it there is data that says the more women are economically empowered they invest 90% back into the economy whereas men invest upwards of 37% and in which in which industries in which back is to the invest in women invest back in infrastructure in school in public health all of what we need so if you're purely talking about numbers what i want to understand is the sensible decent thing to do is make sure your work condition is friendly not you know we're not what is the takeshi singh what was the Jap- japanese you know the game show takeshi's Takeshi castle, castle. Yeah. yeah this is not like takeshi's castle the harder <laughs> the burden you know you get some first prize for suffering make so here i agree with a, her make it a clean yeah. space for everyone we shouldn't have to be talking about what pills are you taking to deal with the pain we shouldn't have to exchange bravery notes like you do fake of you know like you know i have had to take pills to carry on with it what is the legacy they're leaving behind to our future generation that you struggle your way through as opposed to saying i'm sorry excuse my french but this is bullshit This is some special kind of bullshit we've been served over generations, where we are conditioned to believe by our peers that this is normal. I think we should dare to demand to live in a world where we don't have to have such barriers. Imagine purely economics. Imagine in the workplace, there's also data that says when women are suffering from period issues, their focus and concentration level is lesser, their productivity level is lower. If you're talking about pure economics at the workplace, if I'm more productive, mm. if I have the luxury of working out of my house as opposed to my office, where I can be in my loose clothes, where I can have a water bottle on my stomach, and I'm still working, you know, in during my period days, it still will make sure I'm a lot more productive. Instead of making sure the system we look at is is the best it can be for your employees to be as productive as it can be, so you make more money, so the employer also does well, and you earn more goodwill. We're talking about this. And as far as uh, you know, Go- Mr. Goel uh, massing this thing, I say don't look at a gift gift horse in its mouth. It's great that we have allies, better allies than a lot of female allies we seem to have, who are mm. empathizing with our condition and saying that you know we must do something to address this. And if that and we've anyways been called bitchy, crying, complains a lot. Every name they've already thrown at us. It's not like asking for one period yes. piece. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 What happens if I use up all of my twelve leaves due to cramps, and then I sprain my leg? Then what leaves do I use after that? Because the the twelve sick leaves are meant for when you sprain your leg, God forbid, or you need surgery, or you you need actual leaves. So sh- there should be a different compartment of this leaves. So just opening this up again to everyone. Uh, and th- there are a lot of questions being asked about rural India and the unorganized sector, but as we have to start with the organized sector we have to start at a place where we can have these conversations push it through so that it trickles to the rest of the country i mean to answer the question about the unorganized sector which uh, has been asked by bharat rawat a uh, it's very difficult to bring in any change in the unorganized sector because it is simply that it is unorganized and it doesn't have hr policy and it doesn't have leaves and so then it becomes really difficult 
but opening this up uh, again to uh, to all of the women of is it time for us to stop having to buck up and stop pretending and it's pretending like there's no difference between men and women because like the doctor told us there is a difference and the future will be about creating workspaces where women can work along acknowledging and being proud of that difference rather than denying it and pretending it doesn't exist to anyone on the panel who wants to yeah i that. feel but like this uh, oh, sorry. Oh. Dismissing biological differences is just, I feel stupid at this point, excuse my French again here, but it is, it is stupid because at this point, uh, we have to also understand that this glorification of suffering is not helping anyone. Uh, the moment we, we ask women to just, you know, rough it out to just like toughen up, we're also uh, setting a precedent that it is okay to suffer in silence. And it is also okay to, uh, to lie about whatever situation you are in. And I'm honestly saying this, that I don't expect empathy from the present generation or from the peers before me, but at least for Gen Z, we have to normalize this. We have to let them know that they will have a better work environment, that when they step into organizations, we will be more sensitized. There will be a sensitized environment where if a woman is going through something, it will be taken in account. So I feel like, this example needs to be set and I will take this like whatever the whatever the matter has done I will take it and I feel like it should be reviewed again in a year's time how the company how the women in the company have responded to it and more companies should adopt it absolutely if you want me to call if you want me if you want to call me a snowflake for that I am a snowflake I'm happily a snowflake and I have had my period on sets and I was uh, doing a web series that time and I remember on the moment I got my period I was so disoriented I did not remember my lines I could not focus I was sweating profusely I had unbearable cramps and I had to tell everybody around me that we'll have to go slow with me because I'm not in my best possible shape mentally and physically so this this conversation needs to be normalized and yes if yeah. having a period leave does that then yes so i'm, I'm going to throw another i'm going to like throw to. another yeah. spoke in the wheel and doc you yeah. can help me here yeah i, I want to say something yeah. worse than this <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I wanted to say I agree completely that the work environment for a woman in workplace, be it periods, be it her sanitation, is very poor, not only in the organized sector, in the unorganized sector, in the rural area. Girls don't go to school because of periods and uh, girls get urinary tract infection because they don't drink water because they can't go to the toilet because they don't have water. And of course, during menstruation, their menstrual hygiene becomes poor. I agree completely. So the point that I'm trying to make is make better work conditions where you are working for em and empathize with women in all other aspects of uh, um, uh, not only giving them leave. Of course, that is a welcome change. I'm, I'm not saying no, but also look at sanitation for women in workplaces. That's another very important fact. I think that's I the biggest that's need of the, the hour. biggest need. That is the need. Yes, yes, yes absolutely. Uh, Renuka? Yeah. I, I, I was just going to tell Doc, I said, while we're talking about periods, there are women later on in their years that go through menopause, hot flushes, collapsing. Tell me about it. It's been, it's been worse than any period Absolutely. Uh, situation I've dealt with. I suddenly feel like I'm completely collapsing. I'm, I'm sitting in a meeting and I'm sweating. I'm profusely sweating. I can't focus. So yeah, shit happens. Our bodies are different. Absolutely. Um, I just you know, think that, yeah. yes, if I want to step out of that meeting, step out of the place, leave it. That's my choice. That's my opinion. That's my option. I don't feel like I need to be categorized because of it. I mean, you know, you said men and women are different. And very often when I get asked this question, you know, about women drivers and men drivers, I always say, put a man in a sari and six inch heels, make him drive a car and we'll see who drives better. So, yeah, we are different. We are different and we are going to be different. And, and you know, let's not you know, when we're saying let's not glorify this pain and let's not glorify, we're cut from different cloth. We're used to being different. There's no, no question of glorifying it or non-glorifying it. It's a question of realizing we're different, accepting and embracing that difference and being comfortable with it. That's what I'm saying. Doc? Yeah, I agree completely. But I also agree with the previous speaker who said that we should have 
better facilities for women not that. only and if if giving menstrual leave comes with that then why not giving them clean sanitary toilets a place to go why the zomato i suppose when their people go out they won't even have a, a toilet i know many people who have to go to five star hotels just to go to the toilet because there are no toilets on the way yeah. people who don't drink enough of water because they just don't and if you are caught in a traffic jam where do you go to the toilet the japanese have a wonderful uh, invention i don't know if you know you it's a little cup where you pass urine into it and then the urine gets desanitized <laughs> sanitize and then you just throw it away i wish we could have more of those cups of course menstrual cups in india have, have have you know gone a long way to help women in such situations but sanitation clean water and a good toilet for women is what is the need of yeah. the hour and of course if we get menstrual leave why not it's yeah, of course so, women you know, are I, different i remember yeah. i remember as a young reporter um, we be on the field and you're out in the city it's raining it's messy there are no clean toilets, toilets. i mean yeah. we mastered the art of walking very confidently into a five star like you're meant to be absolutely. there you're not absolutely just use the washroom and come back yeah. because there yeah. are no other options but how many women can actually do that and i just want to bring in sumuki on this one because yes before people, my life i fucked but, up one second, second. sumuki there are people who uh, there's one person and actually who anshu gupta says not good not a nice discussion for anshu gupta is being made uncomfortable and i Arey. remember trisha and i ran a campaign when i was on television at 9 o'clock every night on cutting the tax on sanitary napkins right and people would come up to me in the television industry saying you know at dinner time do you really want to be talking about me <laughs> like, i will talk about it at dinner time because i'm having dinner during my periods i don't have that choice right? it's not optional like i'll opt out of it and to just you know to pick up from what trisha said at the end of the day they named the brand whisper which yeah. is that it is a secret do not tell anybody yeah. <laughs> let's pretend this is not happening right yeah. so it's the you know, say, environment absolutely. is designed to keep this a secret do you know yeah. the mindset of uh, people that so many women come and tell me doctor how can you deal with menstruation and uh, you know menstrual blood all the time don't you feel unclean and that's part of my profession but that's the mindset of people <laughs> uh, you know what it is it's it's more to do with a lot of us regardless of what relationship we share with the men around us it's to protect them from a lot of things i uh, be it a mother be it a sister be it just a general companion or a work colleague we constantly protect the man's comfort Delicate in an environment yeah like my mother will be like do not ask for a pad from your father when my father actually picked up the pads but she's not coming from a space of it's it's a, it's a very mild thing of do not let him know what's going on or we're letting our like just like how we're like why do our colleagues need the period leave uh we're once again sort of safeguarding the boys compassion in this where you know boys are running this race and we should run the same race that they are running and uh, this period is coming in the way no it's the, what is what is happening is that the base level itself is different the competition if you want to include the rules of the competition cannot be the same one two also just the you know the power structure in any industry is just the way that it is right now taken care by men so when they say that you know they, we are giving you a period leave based on the fact that we do not understand what you are going through but you guys take a call no when you for example when a male comic makes a masturbation joke don't i take the effort of understanding how masturbation works <laughs> for me to laugh at the joke similarly it's very simple it's not that icky it is just like you cut your hand there's blood coming out there's literally blood coming out and you're taking making sure that it's hygienically covered how how disgusting can this be it's very silly so we also have to generally stop protecting their feelings not just like as a father just teach your son saying buddy this is what's happening relax and just take it easy sometimes and don't be like tum aurto ki baat chal rahi hai tum log baad mein aana nahi aap sun lo sir shayad aapko hansi aa rahi you may maybe you might just laugh actually at the joke that i'm cracking or at the point that i'm making so a the power structures itself are too male dominated so hope maybe there's a bigger call of the fact that there need to be more women in powerful positions to understand that this is not your employees cribbing uh this is maybe a need of the hour also for the women to make sure that this is not misused because something i know that renuka mentioned and it's fair it's absolutely fair as an employer to think what if this uh, rule is misused so a power structure b also just why is this topic so bad i don't understand yeah, yeah. 
cancer is worse cancer is more sensitive i feel bad for cancer why period a bad topic i don't get it <laughs> it's Before a mindset It's a mindset. Yeah. Completely agree. It's a agree. mindset. What about so, how many men have to cook in the kitchen when their wives have uh, their periods because the wives are not allowed in the kitchen? The does girls that still are kept happen? Outside, it happens yeah. all the yeah, time. Yeah, it happens. It happens. It all happens time. all the time, Faye. You will not believe. So many of the men will say, "Oh, today I am doing the cooking because my wife has her periods." Four days. Four yeah, days. Yeah, four days. They are not even allowed so in the can kitchen. I, can I just can I just interpret this differently? So yeah. traditionally yeah. in India, we have been giving women period leave yes. forever. 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 Yeah. forever. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I my grandma used to tell me that this entire myth around you shouldn't water plants, you shouldn't cook. It's it's not because uh, you, you're not pure and pious that time and you shouldn't go To, uh, clo- you shouldn't go around those things. It's actually that you need to be resting on those days. That's the reason why you're exempted from the kitchen back uh, uh, back at the time. That's the reason why you wouldn't water plants because those were the activities women did during that time, which was so watering plants, this. cooking, and all of that. So, literally, like that, we have been giving women period leaves. It's just now suddenly when we are talking about it again, everybody is just. so yeah. pissed off everybody but, is why is everybody so pissed off like i genuinely you know, want to ask everyone it but you know, why well, we are actually all of us are welcoming it no no, no nobody is nobody is pissed off it's no it's two sides off, yeah. of a debate uh it's two sides of a debate where i feel like you know at one level women want a complete level of equality they go out there they want feminism and there's a lot of debate on that as well and yet they like their own little secluded spaces of feeling special so that's where is, my debate comes from but this is not, it's not from, special it's not from uh, 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 you know why this or why not yeah sure like i said like if some people i may not be able to understand the pain but i'm sure some people have really bad pain which needs leave and take it there's no objection to that but you know don't don't make a i don't think it needs to be made a big deal out of that's all but, but the sure. thing is if, if the thing is if you are it's not it's not about them um, making a big deal like the fact that i may not understand that pain and that was but you know that creates more stigma around it because then the boys will be like oh but you are a better girl because you don't complain about it but this girl here she the complains about it therefore ergo she will not be you know the stigma is very mild but that does end up happening it is it isn't a secluded space it's i feel like it's including a bigger space where you're like take the call you have the freedom to take this so isn't this more inclusive rather than us secluding mm-hmm. ourselves mm-hmm. from the game so i i just want to dwell a little bit on this idea of women uh, creating us an area where they feel special as reduka said we anti equality trisha i have a sense you have an opinion about this <laughs> um you know again what are we calling special it is the act of daring to want to work in an environment where i get access to the same opportunities and the same work conditions as my male employee does right um say you've been in a newsroom all your life i remember we used to talk about the terrible cold right mm. it's cold <laughs> most corporates you enter it's cold you're shivering there's again studies done behind how temperature controlled at workplaces is sexist because men wear more layers of clothing they tend to feel cold lesser and therefore women you always see they are like shivering they carry multiple layers so is me po- pointing that out as a discrepancy making me special how do i get to a workplace okay we talk about three systems right my home the environment that i need to get to a workplace and the workplace multiple studies done in india over 97% of sexual abuse cases is by someone known to the victim survivor not from an outsider so homes in most structures are not safe roads you take a train every person who's taken a train will have some story or the other and i won't just say as a binary women any gender non conforming person from the trans community specifically you are subject to sexual harassment okay then then be it then you get to the workplace there there are more issues now the thing is who has made me special the person who has touched me without my consent the person who has subjected me to harassment the person who has subjected my entire race and my entire gender to history and years of violence and discrimination there's a lady uh, i forget her name we was we used to be charged breast tax in in kerala i believe oh, kerala yeah yeah yeah, yeah she yeah, had to cut yeah. off nandeli she had to cut off her breasts in opposition to the breast tax and she passed away so is that special her ultimate sacrifice you know renuka uh, ma'am 
we all applaud you here because the route you have taken is special i'm sure not yeah. just because you're a great driver but because regardless of the obstacles your gender has set you up against you still excel and even though you say i have never been discriminated against i'm sorry but that's a privilege you have been a subject to there will be thousands of women who i will put forward in front of you who will share gross stories of discrimination no hang on i i got i got felt up in a train in college days and felt completely oh, mad terrible. about it i'm so but sorry for subject to that that's the day, day as a woman as a woman trisha my objection to to women who if i got felt up in the train the guy who did it got pulled up hauled up and smacked across the face and told that he felt like that Here's that's the, the difference. Psychologically, the most difference. people when they get touched, your second, your immu- your immune system triggers you to shut down. So you here's the here's my thing. I'm I'm you a need... trained MMA fighter. I will tell you this. Your your instant reaction when someone touches you is not you'll go slap him. Women have to get coached. <laughs> You take a breath and then you slap. You have to coach yourself to education. hit. Education, education is what we need. I Are think the biggest. Who ini sakta? Me to jhapad mar dungi. I want to protect the child who does not have the capacity to slap back. I okay, okay. Let's let's yeah. Let's let's bring this back to the conversation that we were having, and the conversation is about have we created spaces where we expect women to work harder, to push themselves further. to dig deep and dig their heels in and find ways to sort of bear the pain and buck up and pretend as if nothing is happening and is that healthy actually this is what i believe i believe that women who have gotten here over the last 30 40 years have had to really really work and this is where you see there's an age difference in opinion but i believe that the women who are here now need to look back and remove the obstacles for the women who are now coming in so that they don't have to go through what we went through so that it's easier um and and even if you've been working 5 years 10 years 20 years 30 years we've all had unpleasant experiences our jobs now as leaders as team leaders as employers is to make sure that we create safer spaces because we have the experience unlike yeah. the men who were leading us we know so we can you know implement that experience and make sure that other women don't have to go through what we went through that for them it's that, that those obstacles are cleared out of their way that they can actually just run that race on pure merit because we're getting everything else to be equal um so i you know that there are some ridiculous questions also popping up like one man has actually asked us and i find this really funny he said what if a woman gets a period twice a month will she get leave twice a month my good man <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i think that's a very valid question <laughs> yeah that's a valid question <laughs> oh, some oh, some women do get their period twice may, a month. Many many girls get their periods. This. Yeah. Actually, I would like to. I think this, this man should gladly give up his leave to the woman if he's so concerned <laughs> yes. about her. I, Men should really step up. I think it's time for them to also step up and realize the pain and the differences that our bodies might have and have. They should step up, and if they are so worried about the fact that a woman is getting her period twice a month, they should gladly give up their one sick leave to them if that is so much of their concern. It's very it's, it's simple. <laughs> my answer, my answer to this kind sir, is with the question saying, sir, if you get two heart attacks a month, does that mean you will take? You will take. Just want to check with you. आप एक हाथ अटैक छोड़ दोगे क्या कि नहीं कोई बात नहीं पब्लिक के लिए ले लो दूसरा हाथ अटैक इस फॉर द एक में पेन हुआ था दूसरे में नहीं हुआ था यू नो बट बट इन द जनरल इंटरेस्ट ऑफ एजुकेशन आई वांट टू डू दिस राइट एंड आई डोंट नो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू वांट टू जंप ऑन दिस बैक वैगन आई वांट टू एक्चुअली डिस्क्राइब व्हाट दिस पेन फील्स लाइक फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ आवर ऑडियंस हु डजंट फील दिस पेन राइट सो फॉर मी एंड आई नो दैट एवरी फॉर एवरी वुमन इज डिफरेंट फॉर मी it actually feels like someone has grabbed your organs from the inside and is twisting them every 15 20 minutes so you forget you go about your day and suddenly you're like oh my god and you have to keep your face straight right because you're in a meeting or you're yeah. anchoring a show and you can't really go like ah like that so you breathe through it but that's what it feels like it feels like someone is twisting my insides every 20 minutes anyone else wants to describe what this is i would like to plus one what <laughs> page has said twisting <laughs> organs is definitely the way good way to go yeah i, yeah. I think that's a good description fade you've done it for us <laughs> yeah. i know yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I think what I what I felt last week was like somebody was constantly playing dandia 
uh, inside <laughs> my <laughs> somewhere in the abdomen <laughs> yeah yeah and the, the the thing is if 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 it were just two people playing dandia it was fine it was a group of people playing dandia inside of me yeah. which was just unbearable and they weren't stopping it would have been yeah. nice if they took breaks you know if they took like 15 minute breaks and then came back to playing dandia but they were relentless and they didn't stop so that's what it felt like So a friend of yeah. mine described her labor pain where her husband was doing all this, you know, the lamas breathing and foo foo and fa fa right next to her, and she was getting really stressed by him <laughs> because nothing was going away. The pain was intense, and she told him, "She said, honey, just imagine you're pissing out a watermelon." He stopped <laughs> short after that. Never spoke to her. He exited the room, and he just let her be and do her own thing after that. So huh. I guess you have to describe it to them in their lingo. <laughs> absolutely yeah. and we have a pain score which goes from 0 to 10 so you yeah. know when we ask how severe your dysmenorrhea is there's always a pain score and uh, by which we can actually measure the pain and in pain for secondary um, dysmenorrhea like for endometriosis and that can be extremely painful actually so, you no know, doctor this is a very interesting yeah. point you brought yeah. up so when you ask a patient let's assume you ask me how severe is your pain on a scale of 1 to 10 I'm actually giving you a rating purely from my own perspective because I right. do not have a survey of what other women are going through. I don't know how bad it is in comparison but to what other women are going through. So this actually means the period pain is a personal thing. Some women really struggle with it, some don't, some have a higher pain threshold, some Absolutely. have Absolutely. Absolutely. So to assume that women would be lying about it is a really unfair thing to do. Absolutely. It, no, it no. Is, we yeah. give a pain and also it is associated with other like the pain is due to the pain yes. is due to pros, the release of prostaglandins so then you not only have pain but you also have nausea you have uh, intestinal hurry loose motions other symptoms nausea vomiting all that goes so the, the you know the confluence of all these symptoms will indicate the severity of the symptoms as well but say so i have a very interesting question to ask because yeah. we were talking earlier and i think what trisha said about having hygiene is one of the bigger issues and i think Absolutely. we are attributing this whole leave thing to pain we're just putting it as pain but there are loads of women yeah. who don't want to come to work or don't want to be in the workplace simply because they don't have a hygienic place to go and change Absolutely. or change their tap on or their pad yeah. so mm-hmm. that is also a big part of the issue and that definitely can be addressed and resolved and solved you know what i mean so yes. in, in, while some part of it like the doc said it's probably 5% pain there are a lot of more women i feel who are relieved by this because they just simply don't have to go and deal with the shit at work of 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 dealing with the stigma or dealing with the the dirty situation and the loose and i think that relief is far better for them because they'd rather stay home and deal with it the you know, hygiene is on the list so you know we got to ask a question he says oh. if we are in a group meeting hmm. and one of my colleagues is sweating or looking uncomfortable may or may not hmm. be on her period is it embarrassing to us Are you feeling okay openly? Because I don't want to hurt or embarrass her. Why not? Uh, why yeah. not? It's very you can ask me, Shorya, at any point. <laughs> you want to message me saying, "Are you okay?" I will. I will tell you. That's yeah. very. That's very empathetic. Yeah. That's very sweet. Absolutely. Yeah. That is. And if always you, ask people if they're okay. Yeah. I think that's a I great thing Shorya, to do. I would ask Shorya if he's. A, if he's. A, a We need more empathetic people like you around, Shorya. Yeah. Absolutely. That, and, you know also the uh, hygiene plus what we mentioned in the beginning the whole thing about you know take a painkiller have a hot water bag etc you there's an entourage that comes with you when you have, get your period and you can't carry your entourage to work exactly at every, because at every point if i have a hot water bag during my sales meeting saying sir this much figure he'll be like one minute just one minute can you please explain your hot water bag so you know what i mean it's very garma uh, garam figure hai sir ye maine ka <laughs> It is, you know, how many factors it is. Is that the the day, the number of days, or the holiday is actually not the point at all. It is a sign of the fact that there is inclusivity. Whether you cash on it is different, but the fact that there is a, an openness to understand, saying that okay, yum, something is up with you guys. What's up? Okay, but now I think the next step is also just to understand that it's it's not something you don't want to hear about. Like the yes. the need of the hour along with hygiene is not even. Not even sensitizing. Just know what it is, then move on. 
yeah at least yeah. understand what's happening ask the women around you who will share details i promise you yeah, yeah. um you know i i think that especially like look at this panel nobody shy on this panel yeah. and i you know i want to take this conversation one step further there is a very easy solution that is staring us in the face we've spent the last 5 months locked in our houses we are all on period leave nobody is going out everybody <laughs> sitting with hot water bottle men and women we figured out how to work from home why can't this be the solution why can't we just say that listen if you are feeling any kind of discomfort work from home i mean we've all done it it's not so difficult just work from home at the end of the day we want to be able to what is i mean i believe as uh, you know as team leaders the aim should be to make people as productive as possible and give them whatever they need to in order to be productive it doesn't matter you, punch cards don't matter that was a pre covid world this is a post covid world it's also the privilege right? have, like that to commute we have the privilege know? of working yeah. from home so yeah. it's also yeah. Bad, yeah. like sorry yeah as especially considering how much people have to commute in our cities i mean that's such a whole load of time saving just there they probably they have done three times the amount of work saved on that commute itself yeah no this this concept is there for so many women during their pregnancy many of them work from home soon after their delivery they work from home and during their periods also they work from home that's nothing new work from home for i've well, been giving of, certificates so all the time <laughs> the patient so is actually, pregnant you know, work from home yeah doc this is really cool because in a pre covid world it was only women who were pre and postpartum that would work from home the ones who Absolutely. are either going to have babies or have just had babies and there was a great deal of uh, sort of uh, eye rolling in workplaces about this work from home aur kuch kaam hota nahi hai inse pata nahi kya flexi hours work from home ho raha hai now that everybody has worked from home and as an entire corporate sector we have proven that this this is a real thing i hope that this will result in workplaces being more open more welcoming more encouraging i know there are a lot of offices the lot of workplaces that are giving up their offices and telling people to permanently work from home absolutely this should be the way forward trisha I agree um but i do think we also need to address the aspect of um, you know people not having a stable internet connection right yes. <laughs> and we have zoom calls here a lot like sumukhi for example i'm making a case for sumukhi here <laughs> thank you ma'am trisha thank you really uh, appreciate it but uh, uh you know a, a stable environment a safe work a safe home environment so as important as you know um encouraging that side is it's also important to i'm an institutionalist I always believe in how can you make an institution <laughs> robust and resilient as it can be. So the conversation about sanitation, about uh, the correct infrastructure in bathrooms, um, I think also very much needs to be accounted for. Because again, when we talk about work from home, we're not accounting for uh, laborers. We're not yeah, accounting yeah. for factory workers. We're not yeah. accounting for people, you know, that you know, the coal mines. Uh, we're not accounting for a lot of these things uh, that yeah. uh, we must. Um, and finally, what I'll say is, you know, to those people who still don't get it, especially I guess, you know, men. Uh, here's a challenge for you: take a soil sanitary napkin or a full menstrual cup or a soil tampon, and let's just see how you deal with that soiled object for like I don't know, ten minutes in your hand. you know i'm sure no one will be comfortable we have to deal with that you know when we <laughs> menstruate so it's the point is it's not convenient it's definitely yeah. not convenient and i think the only thing we're trying to highlight here is this is the problem and how do we make sure we get to a same conclusion of high productivity at the workplace yeah. you know and for an employer that's like music to his ears his her yes. they they are yours um so if the end goal is high productivity at the workplace increased fi- uh, financial autonomy for a woman for uh, for a trans man for the employers then it's in your interest to make sure your employees feel comfortable and are uh, as uh, great with their output as they can be and if even one woman or one trans man in your workplace is telling you i need that leave because my body is failing me then i think it's in your best interest to address it rather than say here's a start of pain killers choose your pick and uh, you know get to work right so amita amita valachandra has asked a question she says what about those people who cannot work from home for example people who have field jobs amita yeah. in that case you should really take the day off you should put your feet up the world will not stop if you take a day off it's fine and uh, since you work with me 
you will always have that option of the day off. So that's, 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 that's good, the good, good employer. You know, can I tell you, as a, when, when we have writer's room and the girls end up having their period, I push for them to come to work. Because man, they're so vicious and beautiful. They have the best ideas. <laughs> I'm like, mm, oh, the, the maybe maybe this out. guy decided to give the leave because he just had too many cranky ones around. Yeah, Absolutely. Do you I'm know like, we did a hot water bottle <laughs> crank? Put it here and tell me what you're thinking. Oh, yeah, you take so. your 12 days. I don't want you in this mood in the office. Yeah. So, but so, in fact, so in fact, the light of that, you know, to answer the answer the question that our uh, audience member had asked earlier of, is it okay to ask someone? Shaurya had said, is it okay to ask someone? Are you all right? <laughs> yes, it is. But it is not okay to walk <laughs> up to a woman who's bajawing you for getting something wrong and to ask. <laughs> and say, are you? Yes. It's that time of the month. <laughs> you're of those days I was just I, going to say to, that Shora, just just don't, don't be that person more, let me tell you to add to that we, we had done a very nice uh, survey on uh, women prisoners and almost 90% of them had committed their crime in the pre-menstrual and on the first day of their period <laughs> wow <laughs> this does not help our cause in any way <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's a sad fact. <laughs> All the more reasons. Oh no! Oh no! Yes. Men should not yeah. hear that fact, please. Yeah, yeah. So, so all the more reason that they should have the day off. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Renuka, go ahead. They're less likely to go. Yeah, no, no, I'm agreeing with you guys. I wasn't all this time, but now I do. No, no, Renuka, <laughs> to, to pick up from what the doctor said, to be behind the wheel of a really fast car and be predisposed to committing crime because of that. <laughs> You know, if someone actually wants to ask if it's that time of the month, I actually would appreciate if they come to my live shows and ask me that. It's be great. It'll be a great 15 minutes set because I will not spare them. I'll be like, what is that dumb question? You ask me, you tell me right now because it is, it's a very, it's a, it's a power move. That's what it is. It's it very is like, it's a time. I'm like, babe, what are you doing? If you want to fight me, fight me properly. In fact, when whenever there is a fight which comes up saying, is it that time of the month? I actually go, yes, it is that time of the month and you are the next, you are my scapegoat. Now you're fucked. Up, they think kya hota hai. So hmm. why we also yes, yeah, that time of the month. What's the big oh, okay, deal? Okay. One very, one very I deal. want to share something quick. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Then I, so my husband and I have a list of non-negotiables, things we can't do or say to each other. So in that list of non-negotiables, he can can never ask me, is it that time of the month? I propose that everybody includes that in their list of non-negotiables with their partners and male colleagues. No, so, so here's, here's a question Moshi is asking you know? is it okay for a man to have opinions and say on this matter because there's a lot of this going on Twitter no uterus no opinion is what a lot of people are saying I personally believe yes we're encouraging you to know more about it we're encouraging you to form opinions and you must we must have these conversations not as a man versus woman thing we must have these conversations as employers as HR professionals as uh, as spouses, as siblings, as parents, grandparents, we should have open conversations about this. It's almost like, what will we do if our daughter has a cold? Will she still yeah. have to go to school that day? Yeah. It has to be as normal as that conversation. Anyone else? Uh, I want to I want to quickly come in and say no uterus, no opinion is a bit exclusionary uh, yeah. because it sort of completely excludes uh, trans people. That's all I wanted to say because that's also something I've learned in the last two days and I wanted to quickly share it. <laughs> you know, but no, I, also I, I think it's coming as a isn't response. Isn't the point of healthy debate that everyone needs to have an opinion? I mean, it doesn't matter who and where it comes from. Yeah. yeah. I, I, think, I think the reason why I, I, they end up, the, the whole conversation of no, you just no opinions happening is because the, the people, men and women in front are giving a finality of sorts of their opinion on the current state. Like, you know, if if I'm open to listening to a man telling me that, listen, this is going to come in the way of, way of my work. Similarly, a man, woman or any or them, they should be open to the fact that, no, I also have a say in this. That's when it gets very like, okay, you know what? No, you just no opinion. I get the sentiment, but you're right. It's exclusionary. No one's going to learn. Everyone's just, it's just going to be Mars, Venus, whatnot, that garbage. That has been going on yeah. for a while. So, so when I so when I said that, you know, why are people so pissed? I didn't mean the people on the panel. I meant the people on Twitter. <laughs> we are all. I just want to quickly clarify this. 
<laughs> because a lot of men uh, said that and one of the criticism when uh, when a man was told that no uterus no opinion he said well yes i am an employer so i do have an opinion so it will be great if everybody just comes together and talks and speaks more to the female employees and the trans employee in your company who are menstruating again i i really want to say this and i read this on twitter also you need to interview the women in your company you cannot do a blanket you cannot apply a blanket rule on every organization of 10 leaves because you need to figure out how many you need to assess how many women in your organization uh, do they have pcod endometriosis are they going through something uh, that's when you need to come to a conclusion come to a decision you can, as a blanket won't that rule be logistical won't yeah, that be a like logistical it is, nightmare it is yeah. it is it will be a complete given, minority in mind so i guess yeah. there's only no, like, no 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 first of all of I, i get i get where you're coming from kusha but is that's the thing is it's a very ideal scenario where you it take is. into account everyone might as Absolutely. well give something and give them the chance to be like listen you can cash into this when you need to which is what is happening yeah. where you're like i think days. it's like maternity leave it is like maternity leave yes. there was a certain norm that was set and pretty much everybody adheres around the same area so i guess each organization can figure 8 days 12 days or whatever but it will be around the similar norm because you take i guess the 12 was devised for one day or month kind kind of take it off you know? absolutely i just you know, hope it doesn't i just yeah, yeah. I'll just give you the example of Japan, Indonesia, and some countries where they give them three days, and if they don't encash those those, if they don't take leave on those three days, they can encash the pay. By the way, <laughs> Japan is killing it everywhere, man. It yes. is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just hope it doesn't end up in people asking in interviews, "Do you have PCOD? Do you have other conditions?" <laughs> Because that's what's happening. Look at how the admissions are happening in school, where they're asking women, "At what age did you conceive?" So I don't. I really hope that women are not asked these questions in interviews suddenly because of period leaves and because if more organizations want to yeah, adopt it, yeah, suddenly yeah. Trisha, they will say, yeah, "Oh, if you I, have I'm PCOD, my last word." To Trisha, if I may, Trisha, go ahead. You know, um, when we talk about no uterus, no opinion, I think uh, everyone has made very poignant views on that point. What I'll take a step back to is um, when the GST was being set and tax brackets were set to certain products, right? We, I'm hoping we've all seen the picture of the finance cabinet, the ministry that came together. There was uh, one woman representative. Uh, all of them were men and it's not very surprising that they classified bangles and sindoor as tax free and uh, razors as tax free and were to really fight for other articles to be included within the tax free bracket now the thing to remember is representation i think more than anything so when you're talking about opinions everyone is entitled to have an opinion you can't take that right away from them but whose opinions are you listening to and based on whose opinions have you formed your opinion Now, if I'm sitting in a boys' club with uh, boys and talking about should we have did leave or not, right? The whole point is moot. How would you know? Another thing, I mean, I'm so glad, uh, um, Renuka, you brought the you know maternity leave. Leave was not granted by a, a women and uh, child development, and she made statements saying men will take the leave and not show up at home. They will go party and drink with their uh, male friends. <laughs> a lot of men took objection to it, saying, "Why are we not getting paternity leave?" Right? Why are we not getting paternity leave? We want to be equal participants in the home to raise our child, and you're setting a pre uh, precedence of women are, you know, homemakers. Yeah. Therefore, they must. It comes naturally to them, right? So even in this case, as a woman, finance minister of women and child development, you fail to account for paternity and its role in raising a child. So opinions are needed. This is why conversations like this are so important. Where people from different perspectives came, had this conversation. It must be noted that all of us have menstruated, or we, uh, you know, or will menstruate at some point or the other. Have so we come from a body of experience. There was no man sitting here telling us, but my wife still doesn't complain, but my mother has never complained. <laughs> so the opinions that we gather from here. Have been from deeply personal lived experiences, from empathy. You know, when um, uh, uh, Miss Renuka said, "I understand, I empathize." That's beautiful, and I need to learn more from you. Of you know, listening to your perspective and being less defensive. So that is what makes a beautiful. Uh, and this doesn't take long. This took one hour for you to organize it. Say, how long is it at the workplace? Hold a meeting, <laughs> have a meeting, have someone send you a WhatsApp chat. So uh, it's great that we're having these conversations. As a man, if you're not old enough to know, you're young enough to learn. Ask. 
if you're un- yeah. uncomfortable asking if you can google i'm sh- I, i would love to know the google history of all these people if you're shy to find out <laughs> open google and uh, look at google yeah. there are multiple people educating it, you you know there's no education yeah. not being I if you can key. google I, I, you know i just i disagree what, with you just one point i don't want to see the google history of these people <laughs> <laughs> you know if they are saying if you if they googling how to kiss i think you can figure out <laughs> how to they are they are they are so they are googling there is, there is yeah. one one solution here that must be brought about we must have more women team leads bosses entrepreneurs yeah, you know people making yeah. decisions because yeah. i mean this is the whole point at the end of the day uh, to say to say that oh you have to bring in the women and ask them before you make a decision No, you have to have a woman making the decision. You have to have someone in the room, and I've already maintained this: that any room you walk into, whether it is a set or a boardroom or an operation, uh, you know, uh, is it operation okay. theater or whatever else it is, you have to ask yourself: is this room properly represented? Are yeah. there enough women in this room? Are there enough LGBTQI members in this room? are there enough members of different castes in this room if this is a decision making room and we have to ask ourselves why that diversity doesn't exist and it's only when we fix the diversity that then you will have proper decisions being made otherwise it's that small tight group of people who are making decisions for everybody else because they believe they know better than everybody else and if we pick up what trisha put as an example of what was the gst council when they started finance ministers of all states and the finance minister of the union government all men you will see a pattern there as well of upper class male decision makers which is also our workplaces which is also all you know schools colleges all of these things we need to have more women in the seat or in the room when we're making decisions as decision makers not as you know small survey uh, candidates but as actual but decision makers say while i agree with you there i feel that we also have to have more women who are empowered and are educated because i've seen enough and more number of women sit in a room and accept decisions which i normally would not so while i think that is one part of it the diversity i feel that education is a very much larger part of it where people understand things like she's saying you need to understand whether it's male or female they need to understand the situation and be normal with it and i think that is what really needs to happen i mean for for all kinds of situations in our country for the kind of situations we have with rape for men just you know feeling up women they just need to be educated at a far better level in this country yeah. and i think that's a lot of our problems stem from there absolutely oh. educating sons and educating the ma- the male members are the most important crucial thing in yeah. india if you ask me and as everyone she said you know that no oh bechara is kuni she's completely right why do we need to protect them from other oh, yeah. we've learned it they can learn it too they're just as human as we are yes, I, as you tell as you told me pop up painkiller go to work just <laughs> google and get to work what is happening yeah. what why so upset <laughs> oh my god period just relax what's uh. happening There is also a simulation where men can experience period pain and labor pain. So please go for those things. Uh, I'm sure there is something that <laughs> like that happening in India. There are experiments like that um, online. Listen, who have and you managed to convince to do this? And we want to know how. Yeah. There are experiments Pusha. like this on YouTube. Please, please search. Uh, and uh, if you really want to see if men can take the kind of pain women can take, please watch men getting waxed. please you need like to watch those videos i feel like i'm sure japan is still doing up uh, japan is already doing very <laughs> yeah. sure and so, and to so what to japan what face it yeah dress their male guys up into like a sari and put them in a car just to see how getting in and out of a car was so you know here you go they're ahead there also yeah. i know let me let me give you a little bit of on the male perspective you know we have our problems but men have their problems too do you know that women are protected against heart disease as long as we have estrogen and our periods because the estrogen in our bodies prevent atherosclerosis and cardiac events and after menopause a woman and a man have the same uh, incidence of getting heart disease so men get hypertension and heart disease much younger than would be a woman because a woman is protected by her estrogen so that's another uh, trisha a, a biological difference between men and women I mean this is a, a digressing a bit but I think everyone should know that hey, here's another whole too. topic for discussion yeah. stress we need to test now the right, I, 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 now I, these boys I, are not going to leave this <laughs>
and just encouraging people to go get tested is uh, is crucial so just con- have good conversation with your gynac regardless of you know uh, the conversations here you know we always catch the partner first when we suspect something is going on even oh doctor even i catch my partner infertility first. yeah if it infertility or infection or std we always catch the partner first <laughs> <laughs> Well, this has been a blast, but it has to end at some point. Thank you, ladies, uh, for this amazing session. We've overshot time by twenty-one minutes, but I don't think anyone noticed. Uh, this was brilliant, and we should have more of these conversations. And this is fundamentally the point uh, I'm making. I believe that a lot of the keys to understanding each other better is simply conversations. Have more conversations. So. like i said i disagree with the idea of no uterus no opinion i believe that we should have conversations with each other in different capacities we must understand what the other person is going through there's research that tells us that if more women were added to the workforce in india our gdp would grow up exponentially 20% exponentially so that's a huge amount of money guys that you can make by making sure that women are not dropping out of the workplace because you've created really crappy workspaces so include women in decision making include women in conversations and have them decide what is best that way you will increase your productivity you will then increase your top line and your bottom line you will run healthier companies do you really care about anything else other than that this is a great solution for all of us let's talk about this more it's no longer about whispering we're going to talk about the fact that we have our periods that it is screamingly uncomfortable but we still want to be here we want to work we want spaces that will allow us to be the best we can possibly be to give the best of ourselves so let's find ways to make that happen it might be 10 days of period leave it might be 6 days of period leave but let's at least start that conversation so for now good night and thanks for watching thank, thank you. you thank you thank you, you. thank you bye fee It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. It was.